Are we rolling? We're rolling! Yay! Hi, my name is Lisa. I am the Crafty Goddess. Hello and welcome! Uh, today I am going to be doing another haul video. Um, I wanted to showcase some purchases that I made from a local store here called Lens Mill Store. For those of you who live in the southwestern Ontario region, you will know what Lens Mill Store is all about. Uh, you've probably heard of them. You've probably grown up around them. Uh, here, I live in a city called Guelph. Lens Mill Store is kind of a fixture on the landscape of Guelph history. Uh, it used to be located in a section of the city that is called The Ward. It is kind of like the southeast end of Guelph, but um, it started at Lens Mill Store. I'm going to give a little bit of a history here. Lens Mill started out uh, in, I believe, 1970 under the name Norfolk Knitters. It was founded by a guy named Len Minari, who I actually met when I worked at Lens Mill Store. Uh, this was many moons ago. I was an employee there in 2004 and I worked there for about a year and a half. Uh, I went back later when my factory job wasn't doing so hot. Sorry, let me just do a little adjustment here. Hopefully the camera doesn't fall over. Hey, phew. All right. <laughs> um, so yeah, I worked there for a short time and uh, it basically started out as a place called Norfolk Knitting. Uh, it closed down a couple of years ago, a couple of years later, sorry, 1972, uh, due to, I believe, labor disputes. Uh, but Len didn't exactly know at the time what to do with all this factory space, so he turned it into Len's Mill Store. Uh, became a haven for fabrics, knitting, craft supplies. Uh, they also brought in a lot of liquidation merchandise, uh, a lot of factory overruns. If you go in any lens mill store now, and there are 11 locations throughout Ontario, uh, if you walk in there, you're going to find pretty much everything you never thought you needed but suddenly want. <laughs> they sell housewares, they sell cleaning products, they sell pet food and accessories, they sell clothing, um, the fabric section, like I, I've only been to maybe two or three stores in my entire life and I can tell you firsthand the Lens Mill store here in Guelph, uh, like I said it used to be in the ward, it still is in the ward, it's in the um, plaza just off of Victoria and York Roads, uh, again for those who are familiar with Guelph, if not, uh, feel free to google it, check out the Royal City, we're a lot of fun down here, um, but yeah the store here in Guelph is Massive. Uh, as I said, I worked there for just over a year and a half. I had to become quite acclimatized to my surroundings because it was massive. Um, the fabric section is huge. <laughs> I don't sew. I don't quilt. Uh, I have two sewing machines. They're both in storage. And I have been thinking about getting back into sewing and creating and whatnot, but I know a couple of friends who are seamstresses, so I give them my business until I figure out what I'm doing. Um, but the fabric section is amazing. The notions are off the charts. Uh, the yarn section, they revamped this a few years ago and here again, here in the Guelph, in the, uh, Guelph store. Sorry, I'm stuttering a lot today. It's been a hot week and my brain's still trying to get used to <laughs> colder weather. Um, but yes, the yarn section has been rearranged and moved to its own room in the Guelph store. That's where I spend a lot of my quality time is in the yarn room. I get quite happily lost in there and I did today. Uh, so I figured I would show you kind folks who are watching uh, some of the things that I've been able to scare up at the store. Um, as I said, there's 11 locations in and around Ontario and uh, they're a lot of fun. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic and recent spikes in cases in certain cities, such as in Guelph, I think we had nine new cases in the past week alone. Uh, there are some locations, the Guelph store included, where wearing a mask in the store is mandatory now. I know it's a bit of a bit of a damper. We were hoping that we could overcome this and you know, not have to take precautions and whatnot, but now, but precautions are still necessary. 
So we got to make do with what we have in the meantime. Um, and by the way, I know quite a few friends here, like I said, who are seamstresses and love to sew that are getting a lot of material and whatnot from lens mill stores to make their own homemade masks. I don't have any on hand right now. I've bought a few from a couple different friends and uh, lens mill store actually does have kits put together, ready to go to make your own homemade masks. I know there's a lot of controversy about, you know, does it help with this epidemic? Does it prevent? Does it not prevent? Whatever. Um, I personally wear a mask not because I'm afraid to catch this bug. Uh, I know that my immune system is pretty decent, so if I catch it, that's no big deal. I wear a mask because I could be a carrier and I don't want to pass it along to someone whose immune system may not be as strong as mine. Uh, for example, my mom. She is a cancer survivor. I think I've gone over this before. She's a cancer survivor. She's 71. She has COPD. Um, her immune system took a bit of a hit. So I wear it out of concern for persons like her, her who may not be able to fight off as quickly. So I know if somebody coughs on me and they have it, I'm going to get it fine but I don't want to pass it along. So uh, let the let the controversy rage. There's a lot of really fun fabrics you can play with too. So they don't have to be like the sterile looking like surgical masks. I have a few that have like sugar skulls and zombies and they're a lot of fun. Anyway, enough chatter about fabrics and stuff. Well, <laughs> we're going to have a little bit of fabric, kind of sort of fiber, anyway, whatever. Let's show off what I got at Lens Mill Store today. <laughs> Sorry, don't mind the rustling. I'm just going to take a few things out of my bag. Um, and for the record, the prices at Lens Mill Store for fabrics and yarn and whatnot, they are pretty decent. Um, I find the prices for yarn and notions and whatnot. Sorry, don't mind me. Um, I find prices for yarn and notions and craft supplies to be slightly cheaper than places like Michael's, Walmart, etc. Um, I find that uh, sometimes it can be a little disorganized, but that's lens mill for you. That's, I think that's kind of part of their charm, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Uh, so yeah, uh, lens mill stores have, they have monthly promotions and specials and, and they have sales and whatnot. Um, but one of the promotions they have is called the yarn of the month this month. And again, you're going to be going lions, lion brand yarn again. Yes. Again, this month for the month of June, the yarn of the month is lion brand ice cream. So I had to, aren't these cute colors? Like these are adorable. I want to turn this into like either a shawl or a cute summery top or like some sort of throw blanket, like something nice and light and breezy. And okay, for, for people who know me well enough, um, I always kind of favor like darker colors, like black, gray, uh, dark jewel tones, like blood red, purple, whatever. I don't know why I'm gravitating to these cute colors lately. It's the purples and the pinks and the, I don't get it. Maybe it's spring fever. I don't know. But I got a couple of balls of this colorway of Lion Brand ice cream. The colorway is called Cotton Candy. And yeah, it's so, it is uh, considered a DK weight yarn. So it would be a number three. Uh, the specs for it are a 3.75 millimeter knitting needle or a size five crochet hook or an H, whichever, whichever you prefer to use. Um, but here's a little trick. When I knit with this, I've knit shawls out of this yarn. Sorry, this is upside down. Um, it says 3.75. I'll bump up to a 4.5 millimeter needle because it gives it such a nice drape. It, uh, spaces out the stitches a little bit better. It makes the fabric a little bit more breathable. Love it. Love it. More Lion Brand yarn. No, what is your obsession, woman? Oh my god. Everybody knows how much I love shawl and a ball yarn. They're coming out with new colors. And they're absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this one I had to get I had to get two balls of shawl and a ball. They featured shawl and a ball before for uh, 
yarn of the month specials and sometimes the yarn of the month is on sale i didn't check to see whether or not ice cream was on sale or not uh, because i was just so happy that they had my favorite colorway in i just grabbed what i wanted and ran off like a mad woman because that's how i roll uh, but yes shawl and ball is coming out with a few different colors for those of you who have seen previous colorways some of them have included like a little thread of glitter going through it this is one of the newer shades. Isn't it cute? This is called Miss. Sorry. I can't read. Mystical Mirage. And yes, it's got the cute metallic thread running through it. Uh, this is considered a worsted weight, so you, would, you can use a 5mm knitting needle or a size J or 6mm crochet hook. And I've gone on about this before millions of times, so I'm going to save you the spiel. I also got another ball, which doesn't have the metallic glitter. Oh, well, darn. This one is called Reflective Crystal. The, the color gradation for this type of yarn, like, it's just, it's gorgeous. It is absolutely beautiful. I've shown you uh, a shawl that I made before in a colorway called Mermaid Cove, but that was uh, Lambrea Mandala. It's the same theory. It's the same type of color gradation. It's absolutely breathtaking. And once the shawls are knit up, they're absolutely gorgeous. I don't have anything. Sorry, I thought I had a shawl here that I've just made up with the, the shawl in the ball. Apparently it's still packed away and that's fine. So yeah, I was pretty excited to see these. Again, with the pinks and the purples and the cute. I don't know what happened. I I think when I got married, my husband turned me into a girly girl. Because now I'm liking cute colors like pinks and... <laughs> anyway, whatever. My last yarn purchase is, uh, again, from Lion Brand. And I just want to specify, once again, I, as I usually do, I am not sponsored by Lion Brand or any yarn company. I just like to show you kind folks what I like to use for projects. And a lot of the times it's either Lion Brand or Patton's or Burnett, whatever, where the different types of yarn are versatile in color and texture. And this is no different. This is a little bit more basic. <laughs> Basics in the name. It's Lion Brand Basic Stitch. It's supposed to be a not an anti-pilling yarn. Now, for those of you who are knitting and crochet enthusiasts, you know what pilling is. It mostly occurs with natural fabric, uh, natural fibers. I mean, sorry, things like wool. Um, sometimes uh, alpaca, like a lot of animal-based fibers, will pill up, and you'll get those not little nodules of yarn and fuzz and this is supposed to counterbalance it but then again it's an acrylic yarn anyway um yeah it's 100 percent acrylic so it's machine washable and dryable the basic stitch and i think they were playing with a common phrase <laughs> with this name basic stitch yeah okay whatever it is again a worsted weight so it takes a five millimeter needle or size h or five five millimeter size H crochet hook. I got this because uh, again going back to the theme earlier we were talking about masks. I've seen a knit pattern for I've seen crochet patterns and knit patterns for something called ear savers. Uh, you know when you're wearing the elastic mask and it goes over your ears and sometimes it feels like your ears are starting to pull and tug and it gets a little uncomfortable. Ear savers apparently are located at the back where instead of hooking the elastic around your ears, you go right around to the ear savers where there are two buttons that will hold the elastic in place so it doesn't feel like your ears are being ripped off your skull. So I want to make a few of those with this. I just found a free pattern off of Pinterest, so I'm probably going to make a few gazillion of these tonight. Um, yeah, but oh my gosh, I got the yarn for it. Did I get any buttons? You bet I did. I will go in the fabric section sometimes for notions and lace trim and whatnot because I like to make weird things uh, like jewelry pieces and whatnot. The, as, as I said before, the fabric section in Lens Mill Store is incredible. It's huge. It's thorough. Uh, it's quite well organized. But just as I've always said before, please be patient with 
the staff, <laughs> especially now that they've reopened fully and they're trying to get things back in gear. Uh, the crap, the fabric table when I went today was swamped. Everybody's buying reams of fabric and notions and accessories. And every time I go in there, by the way, they're located right next to a Tim Hortons. So I will always ask staff, hey, does anybody want a coffee or a drink or snacks or something? I'll run across the road and get it. And nine times out of ten, I always got the, oh my gosh, you're very sweet to offer. Thank you. But we're good. So once again, I did that after picking out a few buttons. Sorry. I feel, I feel like a card dealer. Pick a card, any card. Uh, so I, I, ba I got some, some basic black ones here. I got some cute silver ones. And I got some purple ones. Because I figure they're all going to match with the gray yarn quite nicely. Um, they also have a bunch of novelty buttons and whatnot. I think they're meant for like baby and kids uh, gear. But I thought I'll start with these first. Go from there. I'm also still kind of wondering whether I should use regular sewing thread to sew the buttons onto the knitted masks or if I can just use regular yarn. That's something I'm obviously going to have to play with to see what's more effective. Uh, and speaking of accessories, one of the, one of the things I really like to knit because to me it's an instant gratification project and it's cute is little stuffed am animals. Crocheted ones are called amigurumi. I think knit ones are just knit animals. And sometimes the animals require eyes, like the, the safety eyes, whatever. I completely forgot that Lensmill sold safety eyes. So I got a bunch of packages. These are a size nine millimeter. So they're going to go quite nicely. I've been making a lot of little stuffy knit owls because who doesn't want a pet owl sitting on their shoulder? <laughs> it's just one of those things. These go for 99 cents a package. There are eight eyes and eye backings per package. You can't go wrong with this. But yeah, that's my haul from Lens Mill. For those of you who live in and around the Ontario region, Check them out if you haven't already. It's a lot of fun. You'll get lost rather quickly. Uh, but just remember to check with the store that's nearest to you whether or not wearing a mask is mandatory. Um, they do have pre-made masks for sale there that have been made by the staff. So in case you forgot one or didn't have one with you, I'm sure they can help you with that. Um, I think in Guelph, speaking of masks, it doesn't have to be a surgical mask as long as it's covering your nose and your mouth. Again, I know this is a hot topic. This is up for debate. I've seen this all over social media, effectiveness versus non. I'm not, I'm not here to debate it. I'm just here to do my bit. And I think I did my bit quite nicely by showing you some of the things you can get at the Lens Mill store. All right, enough yapping. I think it's time for me to go make some ear savers. Thank you once again for joining me on my <laughs> rambling journey of buying yarn and making things. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. If you wish to see more videos like this, please hit subscribe. And yeah, let's do this again sometime. This was a lot of fun. I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Take care. Be safe. We'll talk soon.